put an apology on Identica because of that, because what I wasn't aware of, when you when you join Google Plus, if you join Google Plus, you'll see a big list of suggested people that it uh, draws from your from your address if you've got a Google uh, email address. And what I didn't realise was that when I was inviting everybody in my address, book, as you do with a social network, every time I was making a post on Google Plus, he was actually spamming that person with email, and it was only because I got hit on another email address of mine by somebody else. To I started to realise what was going on. I did notice now that they have a message at the beginning uh, when you go to the sign up screen telling you that this happens, that uh, a message is sent out even to non members of Google. Plus. I don't recall seeing that before because if I had, I wouldn't have invited all the people I did. And so I think one of the people I had to apologise to was you, Roy, because you probably would from myself in regards to what I was updating on Google Plus at the time. I don't think, I, said, I, don't think I said anything. I got in the so-called invitations with quite a few people. Yeah, I, that's and in some more. cases, I think those people would not want to be seen as inviting me uh, because they know I'm pretty much not a big fan of the, uh, the whole scene that's associated with so-called social network. Uh, the way I see it is they try to use their space as a sort of a vacuum of content for uh, people's links, people's stories, people's uh, friends, uh, so that people basically don't do it themselves, but they be belong to a part of a uh, network effect enabled uh, community of people producing more content for Google to put ads on. Uh, I don't trace the, the benefits or the I mean, I, I, I run my own sites and run my own mail server, things like that. So I, I really don't need those services, and I do try to avoid them to the extent that I can. Um, I also use Identica for the reason, well, if you want to be part of a community and you want to communicate within the framework of friends and things like that, uh, you could do it in a way that's a bit more um, more open and centered. Well, one of the things I can do with Identica is actually import the content that I post and... Uh, uh, which I do basically using all kinds of uh, processes and that. Uh, well, what strikes me as, as, as odd with, with Google's thing, do you remember this thing called uh, Buzz that got them sued before? Yeah, I, I never I never really looked into that. I've seen quite a few references to it. And it's funny you should mention that because I brought up the other day with another user, Google Wave, and they had no clue what I was talking to, uh, which was another tech tech that sort of went the, went the journey. Uh, from Google, but no, go on. sorry, continue on with yeah. that. I'll well, I think what they got sued for was people's uh, uh, people's address books being exposed in some way. So, if you if you were to um, have your girlfriend as part of your network, she would see you perhaps communicating with girls you used to speak to, uh, which caused some trouble for obvious. No, serious, seriously though, <laughs> uh, it's, it's causing trouble because they're not supposed to basically expose your address book. Yeah, they shouldn't mix work with personal life, things like that. Uh, but they did make this mistake. They did cause some troubles and some aches to people. And it very much reminds me what happens now with Buzz and uh, with sorry with uh, with Plus. Is uh, lots of people have been very forgiving and uh, been very uh, passive about it. But I mean, Google shouldn't be abusing your address book to try and kind of spam people on the excuse that well you gave them the permission because you didn't tick some. Box. It's well, a, please don't spare my friends. Um, to, be, they, to be fair to Google, I, I did actually voluntarily invite these people. So, for example, if you got spammed by myself, that would be in a case of me seeing your name on the list and right trying to invite you, and also putting you in my contacts list so that you're updated with my 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 plus as well. If you want to call the updates on Google Plus. If I could just say though, to, um, which is sort of the more important aspect of the social network because we can talk all day about freedoms that you may lose, invasions of privacy, but we all know that the mainstream user doesn't tend to pay much consideration to these issues and their social networking thrives on how many users it has and I think What's Facebook has shown. Trends and trends have usually been said by the yeah. media. So you could say the same thing about politics to an extent. You could say uh, people don't think that candidates they should represent them. They think, you know, oh, this person says something very eccentric. It must be very strange. They shouldn't be voting for this person. Oh, and this person has a very unusual opinion, so this person's only going to get 2%. So if I vote for this person, this person, uh, this, this vote is going to go down the rubbish, uh, tube or something. Uh, the, the thing is with these, uh, situations is the media drives a lot of the consensus. 
Uh, so one of the things that Stallman said recently, is something I very much agree with, is that the whole cloud computing thing has been exaggerated by the media, and it's been sold to people as the next best thing. And people are very much confused when they hear about cloud. They think, oh, it's the cloud, it's the new thing. We've only heard about cloud since like 2007. So, you know, the cloud is apparently the uh, the buzz, the, the, the next thing to, to hop on and to, to embrace. And it's a, it's a really troubling issue. It's not really a step forward. It's just basically companies doing exactly what they used to do, but doing it on somebody else's servers. Very convenient for big brother states, very convenient for companies that want to try and advertise to you. Uh, and very convenient also for, um, you know, all kinds of malicious reasons that aren't actually enriching the experience so much. Uh, you have things like, if, if, if you want to just use your browser and use settings uh, uh, globally, you have things like the synchronization of settings. You, you don't really require much of a so-called cloud for that. You just need a portability of data at some level without the application being driven with you from place to place. So I suppose what I'm trying to say, though, uh, is that in this case, uh, social media, as you say, people choose that because they don't care about freedom. I, I don't think it's really that simple. I think people are driven to it because there is some seeding element here that drives people into these networks. Oh, you know. oh sure, but the very media that drives them to it is also the media that damns them. Uh, my view was always that if the mainstream user had any considerations of privacy, then they would have run for the hills the second the crack started to show in Facebook. They didn't, and it's taken something like Google to now have people asking the question, the are people going to migrate away from Facebook? I actually know loads of people who are on Facebook and they hate Facebook and they heard us oh, yeah, that's go and they're still with it and you know why they're still yeah. on it? Because all the friends are on it and even though the friends are, it's kind of like an, a naked emperor type situation where everyone knows that something is wrong there uh, but everyone is still on the same show and everybody is still watching the same king walking down the aisle. Uh, and they carry on just, you know, worshipping the, uh, you know, the uh, the silk and the, and the linen and everything else. And, but they don't actually think about what if we all left at the same time or went to somewhere different that's going to be treating us a bit differently. They don't think about this possibility. And the question is what drove them there in the first place. Remember, uh, when people joined Facebook, and some of them joined in 2005 or so, it wasn't quite the same story. The site wasn't doing the same things. It changed over time and basically morphed into the thing it, it is known as uh, today. So, Well, if we just very briefly skim over the Google Plus page, there's some quite important things I wanted to bring up on uh, for the show from my preliminary uh, looking at it over the last, I think, five, six days I've been a member. Uh, the nice thing about Google Plus is that I can put all my contacts into separate sections. So, for example, I can have Roy in my following section and in my friends sections if Roy was on Google+, Plus, which means that when I make a post, I can choose which group of people I want to direct that post at, and it can't be viewed by any of the others. So, for example, I might have some family snaps, which would be of no interest to anybody but my family. Well, I can put that to my family only, and only my family members will see that. Everybody else will be completely oblivious. Conversely, if I want to talk about the latest Linux distribution I've looked at, my family aren't going to be interested in that, so I can exclude them from that uh, from that post. It's a very good way of working, and I don't believe Facebook does that at the moment. I, I don't use Facebook, so I'm assuming that's still the case. Um, the main thing about Google Plus for me, uh, apart from being a, a, a a social networking site uh, that's instead of Facebook, which I refuse to use, is probably the chat, which is in an incredibly advanced stage, in my humble opinion. The Google Plus allows you to chat via a text medium, obviously on your um, on your stream or your, your wall, whatever you want to call it, but also allows you to directly chat to anybody on your contact list who you've previously agreed to chat with. So you send them an invite to chat, they agree, and then you, they come on your contact list. The other part that really does impress is the voice and video chat which I've just tested out tonight, literally an hour ago, with a very good friend of mine um, who's online quite often, and he's uh, from Brazil. And we talked on on the voice chat uh, through Google+, and all I can say, absolutely fantastic. No lag whatsoever. The sound quality was far better than anything I've ever experienced through Skype. 
it might have been blind luck, it might have been my ISP was in a good mood, or his ISP was in a good mood, and we're getting a decent uh, bandwidth. Or it could be that this is a damn good service and something that's very, very useful. Uh, both of us were very, very impress- impressed at the crystal clarity of the sound. Um, and the other thing it allows you to do as well is 